We gotta learn, gotta learn, gotta learn, gotta learn To be happy I've been trying to enjoy myself Be happy, be happy, be happy I've been trying to enjoy myself Be happy What up, y'all? Episode 27 of Cyrus Tries to Enjoy Himself, and I'm going to level with you guys. I don't have any topics, really. I've had, like, an interesting week, uh, a productive week, but an interesting week. Um, and I don't necessarily have any topics. I've been, like, spending so much time in my head, um, getting a lot done, and, you know, getting a lot done uh, on things that I can't talk about. So it's just, like... It's weird because normally I could share stuff with you and I really can't. It's one of those things where it will it will ruin it and I can't do that. I don't want to do that, you know? I want people to be surprised. So, yeah, it's weird. It's uh, this must be like what it's like when uh people are, you know, uh like all the actors in the MCU and stuff are are doing their interviews and they're like, "Hey, what's up? We're here. Yeah, I play the Falcon, but I can't tell you anything about the movie <laughs> or I'll get fired. So not to say that I'm in a Marvel movie. That would be great. I'm not, you know, so don't get your hopes up. But yeah, I'm just trying to like, I don't want to sink the ship before it sails. Okay. It, it, that basically just means like, I'm trying to like get out to sea first, you know, like, I don't know what the weather looks like and I don't want to. I don't I don't want to dig my own grave <laughs> on that one. So I just want to see it through and hopefully uh, you know everything works out, you know, how I see it in my head. And uh so that you can share it with me, you know, the finished product. So yeah, uh you know, if you're on YouTube, please comment below and let me know how you're doing, what's new, uh what you're looking forward to this week. Hopefully you have something you're looking forward to. Um, otherwise, yeah, we're just, we're going to wing this episode because I don't really have any topics. Let's, uh, what's, what are the first things that are going to come to mind here? What do I almost, um, I almost went to see one of my favorite comedians yesterday, Tim Dillon. I was so close, uh, on Friday. I was, uh, he had just put up tickets for a live podcast and I was like, but it was in Cleveland and I'm not going to lie. Like I'm not a big fan of Cleveland. <laughs> Listen. I love how that's what I always say before I say some crazy shit. I'm like, listen, now let me say the most insulting shit ever. <laughs> it's like my setup. Listen, I know what I know what I do. I know my mannerisms. I know what I'd be doing. Um, I just couldn't justify going to Cleveland on a whim to see, you know, an hour long event at like 3.30 in the afternoon on a Sunday. Or was it Saturday? I think it was Saturday. Yeah, it was Saturday. So I was real close to, you know, making an impromptu trip on Friday, but... Listen, I've seen uh, LeBron James in Cleveland, I think, once or twice. Twice? I saw him play against Milwaukee, so I saw him play against Giannis once. Have I seen a second? I'm pretty sure I've seen I've seen him play in L.A. It's funny. I lived in Miami, and I didn't see him play then. Dingus. The whole time I was there, you know. I, that was the, I think I was there the first year... Uh, yeah, him and Bosch went there, and I didn't go to a single game, and I was the biggest fan. Obviously not. Honestly, I couldn't afford to go. Miami's crazy. They be charging way too much for everything in Miami. But, yeah, I couldn't justify it. I was real close. He had some actual shows in Chicago and some other stuff, but they sold out super quick. And you have to buy, like, a minimum of two tickets. So, like, if I couldn't get a friend to go with me, I, I, you know, on a whim like that, I was just about to tweet and be like, oh, is there a fan in Chicago that wants to come see this comedy show? Because I have to buy two tickets anyway. You should come through. So I almost did it. I would like to see him. Uh, there's a few comedians I would like to see. Mostly because I understand for them, they're, they're not really making money doing these uh, events because, I, you know, they're limited capacity at most places. It's like 25%. And... So no one's making money on a, on a show like that. So, and it's going to be a smaller room, spaced out, and it just seems like a, selfishly as a fan, that's like best case scenario, right? 
you get to see like someone you actually you you really enjoy their content whether 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 it's comedy or music it doesn't matter but you get to see them in a small room with a select number of people i guess you know maybe that's the one silver silver line uh with uh with covid <laughs> it's not so damn crowded i do enjoy the crowded stuff too there's nothing like getting somebody else's neck sweat all over your back you know crowd surfing doing all that crazy shit going to going to you know see some of your favorite artists live nothing quite like that getting a drink and dropping it immediately and then trying to pick it up off the floor and getting your hands stuck getting stepped on getting trampled ending up in the hospital dying getting dug up brought back to life round two you know what i'm talking about we we miss that stuff too the type of thing where if you leave your your drink unattended for approximately 30 seconds, there's a 100% chance you'll get roofied. Guy or girl, doesn't matter. You're getting roofied. That just reminded me of something. Let's talk about the one time I did Molly. <laughs> my mom's going to love this podcast. I was in Chicago. It was uh, my birthday weekend with Marcus. Um, this would be 2000. I don't care. I'm airing it out. Listen, this is why I'm comfortable airing something like this out. I know. I think I've mentioned doing Molly once before. I don't think I explained the story, like my experience with it. But I, uh, because I'm not actively doing that stuff, uh, I feel comfortable talking about it because it's funny in hindsight to be like, "Oh, what a moron!" But Molly, it was actually I had a great experience aside from the like the next day hangover, and I don't know if that was uh, the Molly's fault or if it was. Uh, the fact that I drank a bunch of alcohol, too. And Molly, like, numbs the fucking alcohol. You're just like, I can drink all of it. <laughs> so it's like a birthday weekend. Went to Chicago. I was uh, I was seeing this girl at the time, and Marcus came with because our birthdays are a day apart. Don't you love how, you know. I remember the day that Marcus and I found out our birthdays were, like, a day apart. I was, like, sitting in his car. I think we were driving down... Um, Lake Lansing Road, headed towards, yeah, I think we were. We had just turned on the Lake Lansing Road uh, by the Quality Dairy. This wouldn't mean anything, y'all. I'm just Maybe my memory serves, serves me right. We'll see when Marcus is like, no, the fuck that was not. We were fishing, dude. No, we've never been fishing, you know? Except, you know what I'm saying? We got, we got lines, and he's got sinkers. You know what I'm saying? I don't know where this is going. Bro, I got the hooks. This is so dumb. Forget I said anything. But, yeah, so we were celebrating in Chicago. I uh, started the night out. I hadn't done Molly yet. I was still on the fence about whether I was going to do it for sure or not. But we were eating at, like, I think it was, like, this Italian restaurant or something crazy. One of those places where they don't separate your bill. It all comes on one check, and you, no one can afford it. And you all just point fingers at each other like the Spider-Man meme, like, who's paying? Whose card's not going to get declined? That type of place. We were eating there. I was actually eating with uh, Freddie from Lewis. The child was there because um, he was, like, dating a girl that was really good friends with the girl I was seeing at the time. So um, we were doing all, we're hanging out there. I think Marcus took Molly during dinner. <laughs> and then I didn't yet. I uh, We went up to some... Top, I can't remember what the name of the bar was, but we went up to this bar and that's when I took it. I took it like right at midnight. Um, and I remember when it hit me, it was crazy. It was, yeah, it was joy. It was like, I'm not the type of person that's normally like getting drunk and it's like, let's go dance, bitch. I'm not that guy, but I became that guy. So I was dancing my ass off. I was just like, I gotta keep moving. Just sweat coming down my face. Uh, I remember we went to this club called Underground, and uh, I guess I Justin Bieber had a show or something the following day or that weekend, and so I guess when a bigger artist has events like that, they will book out tables at different clubs and stuff around that date in case they get there early, whatever. You know, they're do usually doing other promotional events on the side, so Bieber booked the table. Um, he wasn't there. But there was a table that was, like, all paid for. I could be wrong. I could be remembering this wrong. But I know that I mostly got free drinks, which was great because I remember paying for one and the Jack and Coke was, like, $25 or something. And I was like, you giving me the rest of the bottle? Huh? 
damn. Also, his name's Jack. No motherfucker named Jack is worth $25. You fucking kidding me? So, whatever. I was dancing my ass off. But I remember, as soon as the molly really hit me, I had to take a shit so bad. That's when I... <laughs> apparently, that's normal. So, I'm like shitting in the club. And I'm like, <laughs> come on. I need to dance. Hurry up. You know, you ever been constipated in the club before? Man. You haven't lived. <laughs> they always have the guy. They always have the guy in the, those bathrooms too. That's like monitoring the situation to make sure no one's doing drugs. He's like looking over the thing, like "You good, bro?" And I'm just like, "I'm not doing drugs. I already did the drugs. Now we have problems." Anyways, once that passed, no pun intended, I uh, went out and danced my ass off. Had a great night. It was so much fun. Um, I was just in a great mood, but I think I drank too much alcohol. Um, I think I smoked weed too. It was just too much of everything. So my mom loves this. But this would have been 2000. Was this 16, 2016? Yeah, this is like my We Should Just Enjoy Ourselves days. So I was trying to, you know, trying. So yeah, that was, <laughs> there's that story. Oh my goodness. And then the next day, I like, we were supposed to celebrate Marcus's birthday, but I'm just a sack of shit. I get the worst hangovers ever. So I like, I was not fun at all. I didn't even really celebrate with Marcus. I'm an asshole for that. I physically couldn't. I struggled through this like little event at my girl's place with, um, Freddie was there again. This is like, I think he, they only had It's Strange out, right? Is that the name of the song? I think that was the only song he had out at the time. And it wasn't really like popular yet. So he was so nice, literally such a nice person. Um, so at the time, but I was also, my, my ego at the time was probably a little bit too inflated too. So I remember he, went, he was like, oh, your music's cool, bro, yada, yada. And I'm like, thanks, man. I'm not doing a song with you, you feel me? Like, you know, <laughs> moron. Who won that? <laughs> Who fucked up that exchange? No, it was a good exchange. I just remember being in my, like, Whatever, bro. What you done, dog? <laughs> Man, we we do it to ourselves, don't we? Yeah, we do. Sweet, that's the end of the episode. I'm joking. We'll get through the episode. It is later. I'm shooting this one later than uh, I wanted to. I watched a couple movies today. I watched three movies today, actually. I mean, because that's what I... That's the type. I have to... I'm an all or nothing person. I always am. So that's why I like, normally I don't watch any TV. I don't watch any movies. I don't do anything like that. I actually was talking to a friend and I realized I've seen like one movie since October. And there is a bunch of movies I've been meaning to watch. And then I watched one last night and it was like kind of nice. I never just sit down and do nothing. So I watched that and then I was like, this director's awesome. So I watched a couple more of his movies. And uh, yeah. A bunch of awesome stuff today. I really enjoyed it. I don't. All right, so it's uh, uh, what is, what is it? Justin Benson and was it Aaron Moorhead? Is that his name? They shot like, uh, Resolution, The Endless, um, Synchronic. No foot stop, dude. We spend twenty three and a half hours every day together. For real, you have issues. You need to go to cat therapy. I'll pay for it because you don't have a fucking job. What do you do to pay the bills? How are you acting up? You haven't even paid for the fucking surface area where you're standing to be having attitude. Uh-uh. If you pay enough rent to cover the hallway, do whatever the hell you want in the hallway. You don't even pay for the room you shit in. Why don't we talk about that? I'm trying not to talk directly into the microphone because I want to talk out of ears off. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if my cat understood what I was saying? He doesn't. The second I just stop paying attention to him again, he's just going to bitch again. Because that's how it works. But yeah, Resolution, The Endless, uh, Synchronic, and Spring. I watched all four of those. <laughs> uh, they were all great. Um, it's pretty amazing because they shot the... I know for sure they shot uh, the first three with a smaller budget. And then Synchronic had some of the same... Yeah, their budget was definitely a bit higher on that one, but not by much. Uh, mostly just for a few different scenes um, with some special effects. But it's pretty impressive. Uh, 
it just goes to show that it's all in the story. I don't want to spoil those movies for people that haven't watched them, but I definitely recommend all of them. Uh, watch Resolution before you watch The Endless. Uh, otherwise, yeah, watch the other two however you want to, wherever you can find them. Um, yeah, they're just... I guess it's inspiring to see what you can do with less. I know they shoot with red cameras, which is pretty much... That's like the industry standard for film. You know, those can get pricey, but, I mean, you can rent them for not too much money. And I saw they shot, like, a bunch of their their B-roll with uh, a GH4, which is not a very expensive camera. I think you can get them for, like, 700 800 bucks or something, which is, like, <laughs> that's my camera costs more than that. Like, the fuck? And, honestly, the, the GH4 is probably better. Mine's just, like, a I have the RX100, which is a great point-and-shoot. It's awesome for that purpose. You know, someday I would like to get, like, a legitimate, a really nice camera because I have so many ideas, you know, that I almost feel like music is, uh, obviously, I, I can kind of bring people into my mind, into my world with music. Um, and everyone can appreciate music as something you can put on, you know. I mean, you you know, just no matter what. it's uh, it, it can be background music to help you get through a study sesh. Uh, it can be something to get you going before an event. You know, maybe you're an athlete. This music serves a purpose in pretty much every single situation. Um, but there's something else about visuals. And I understand For the Love got into visuals. So, like, he owns a video production company now. He shoots a bunch of visuals. And it, I always thought it was crazy because I'm like, bro, you're like pitch perfect voice. Uh, you produce. You can play the keys. He was a drummer in high school, an amazing drummer. So he was doing percussion and everything, too. Then he's, like, making his own kick drums, making his own sounds and stuff because he's uh, producing. And then he was dancing like crazy. Dude can dance. So I'm like, you do all this stuff so well. And then he settled on video production. And at first, I was, like, kind of like, bro, you're like, maybe that's why. It's because he was so good at all those other things. It's like, what's the next challenge? How can I keep leveling up? But then it occurred to me that he got into the visuals, I think, because it was the only way for people to really see what was in his head. It was like the only way he could express like, this is what I think about when I write songs or I do this. And I can literally show you into my head. I can show you exactly what I'm seeing. And so I realized, I was like, you know what? Honestly, it makes the most sense that that's what he does. Um, he still obviously does the other stuff too. I, I, I know he has some music coming actually. And so... I'm realizing, like, I'm making that transition a lot, too, because what's next? You know, what is my next challenge? And so that's why I've, like, wanted to get into acting. But I'll be honest with you guys. I've been doing a lot um, a lot of writing as well. It's like I want to I wanna bring story to life. I want to bring stories to life visually. And I have these ideas. I have crazy ideas. I'm not sure. I'm not confident enough. I'm the one that can shoot them. But, um, you know, so I've been, I've been writing a lot because I'm, like, there's just so much I want to tell and so much I want to show. And music can only do so much. If you pair the music with the visual, you can do something really extraordinary. Uh, there's a lot of... Annihilation is an, a wonderfully scored movie. That um, It's all just like... There's, I don't even think there's a single uh, a song in that entire, that entire film that has uh, words. It's just aesthetic. It's a... You're... You're providing an aura. You're providing a feeling, and that can dictate the mood for the viewer. There's so much that so much so much is fascinating about film. So I really appreciate it. So yeah, I I watched um, those movies, and they mostly just reinforced some of the ideas I had in my head. And uh, where it was like, oh, okay, so you don't need a lot to shoot this. Like you don't need a crazy budget. You don't. You just need a really good idea and. Um, people willing to execute, you know? Murder it. <laughs> I'm so dumb. Oh, goodness gracious. Yeah, so that's what I was I was doing. It was kind of nice to do that. I don't I don't like I said I never do that. I just work all day long. I feel like if I'm not working, I'm um I'm somehow taking a step backwards rather than just like maybe maneuvering around in the present. I literally think I'm always taking a step back if I'm not working and trying to progress, move forward. And I realized watching those, it's like, no, uh, there are ways that I could justify that because they're reinforcing and they're giving me ideas. I don't usually like to get inspired by other people 
because I feel like uh, I'm going to incorporate some of those things subconsciously. That's the last thing I ever wanted to do, especially musically, is feel like I was taking someone else's idea. I wanted every single idea to be mine. I wanted to be the person that did it first, thought of it first, and there's no other credits to provide. Oh, what inspired you to do this? I did. I inspired myself. This is the ideas I had in my head. So I think it's probably why I don't watch a lot of movies or at least anymore. I realized growing up, some of my favorite movies were like, and it makes sense, like the, most of them were like vengeance, um, uh, stories of uh, w- where someone loses everything and finds a way to, to gain it back. Uh, Gladiator was a movie, Count of Monte Cristo. Uh, I like those those movies a lot. I remember growing up. Um, I remember I like Hitch a lot. I don't know the Will Smith movie. I think probably because I was just like I was fascinated by. How, like I, I almost reinvented myself after high school, and I realized a lot of that. I like because I couldn't approach people in high school. I didn't really have the confidence yet. But after high school, I almost felt like I re- reinvent. I definitely reinvented myself. And then I became that character. I became that person. Um, I was explaining this to a friend once where I was like, I always kind of had these thoughts and ideas in my head. I just didn't really know how to act on them. And as soon as I started acting like I was literally playing a character in real life, like, oh, I can be charismatic. I can be funny. I can convince this person to like me. Because it's not me. I'm playing a character almost. And then you almost become that character. I don't know if that makes sense, but I, I literally manifested a lot of these things. Like, who do I want to be? Like, what, what person do I want to be? And I just started trying things, like, even though that wasn't necessarily me. And then I would see certain things would work. I would get a reaction. And because psychologically I'm telling myself that I'm playing a character, like, this isn't me. I'm acting right now, right? I was, you know, so that's why I was, I've always thought that. I think we do that in so many, like, if you're a server in the restaurant industry, you're acting every fucking day. You could, it doesn't, you could just stock shelves at, you know, a warehouse, wherever. And, you know, the people you interact with, you might not even really enjoy their company, but you might act like they're, you know, like you get along with them. We're acting every single day of our lives. So I always found it fascinating to kind of see that parallel. And then I realized, like, acting really isn't that hard. We all do it. It's just, uh, you, I think you psych yourself out because you're like, oh, I'm acting. I, like you, you realize, but it's like, no, it's really not that complicated. Now, I'm, I, me saying that, I'm probably going to, the next thing I shoot, I'm just going to bomb so bad. They're going to be like, the fuck are you doing, dude? Huh? Uh, goodness. Uh, what's uh, the disaster artist? That was that movie about the guy that made the film that was like terrible but became a cult classic. I need to watch that. I haven't seen that yet. Um, James Franco's rendition. I heard it was awesome though. It's so crazy. He made a movie about another guy making a movie. <laughs> it's like such an original, it's such a weird idea and it worked. Man. So, yeah, I've just been, uh, past couple of days, that's kind of what I was doing. I kind of took uh, yesterday off for the most part. I didn't like I wasn't sleeping well a few days prior so like I took a nap which I don't do like Drake I don't take naps so I took a nap and then it kind of fucked up my sleep schedule and then it was like midnight and I'm like let's watch a movie I guess what normally it's just like I'm gonna go work on music or something else until my brain is fried and I physically can't stay awake anymore but yeah it was nice then last week I got I was struggling to record for a couple of days, and I, then I think Wednesday I had a breakthrough, and I finished the recordings on uh, three different songs in the same day. That's never happened. So, yeah, it's kind of weird how that works. Sometimes, like, once you just catch your stride, it's just like, boom, ding, 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 get it all done in one go. Um, I've been day trading a lot, obviously. Uh, made some decent money off GameStop. I'm keeping the ball rolling, though, see where we can take this. Um yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with that. It's kind of, uh, I mean, that's what I was going to school for. I was going to school for business and finance and stuff. Um, obviously, I dropped out multiple times. But I, I was always really into the stock market. I kind of, I, I always liked patterns. I like to solve things. You know, and that's what music is, essentially. I'm trying to solve a formula. I'm trying to figure out the puzzle. 
you know, until I have a completed product. So I've noticed that I was always really good at math and understanding numbers and patterns. And then for some reason, it translated perfectly into creativity as well. You know, so I, I do. I just look at it. It is all numbers. I mean, I was talking to four about it, actually, about uh, certain notes. If you're playing certain notes on a keyboard or whatever, they will appear more present in certain frequency, frequencies on an equalizer chart, which uh, it makes sense, but it didn't occur to me. And I was like, music really is just math. It's all math. Obviously, most people aren't sitting there like, I need to fucking... <laughs> They're over here playing the keys like, I'm playing a 40 hertz and then... A... Yeah, most people aren't doing that, but... Um, yeah, it is. Like most, there's some things you know. There's no rhyme or reason, but at other times there really is, and you just kind of have to find the pieces that work together. But yeah, so I'm having a lot of fun. But it does, it has been consuming my days. So from like nine to like four, six p.m. in that range. I'm literally, I'm day trading. I'm staring at numbers all day. I'm just like, oh, so it's hard to focus on other things because anything can happen and you have to be prepared to either, you know, buy or sell. There's just like so much involved. I'm probably boring the hell out of everyone else right now. Let me think of other stories where I did drugs. <laughs> uh, the first time I smoked weed, I tweeted about it once. Let's talk about that. That was pretty funny because I thought I was about to pass away in that bitch. I wake, went to my friends. Um... I was talking shit. I was just like, oh, yeah, I smoke weed all the time, bro. I low-key had never smoked before. He was like, oh, you should come over sometime. And I was like, yeah, for sure. I was kind of a late bloomer, I think, by most people's standards, because this is like summer before senior year of high school. It was the first time I smoked weed. But I, like, went over to his place. He had a bong, and he, like, passed it to me. And I, like, thank God he did it first so that I could, like, see how to smoke it. Because I was like, how the fuck do you do that contraption? Well, of course, I took an enormous hit. And then I took another one because I had to show off. And the next thing I know, I uh, teleported to the the kitchen upstairs. I literally felt like I teleported. I fucking immediately, I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to die. I'm, I'm This is the, my last day on Earth. I felt like I was traveling to another dimension i literally felt like i was in a third person watching myself die <laughs> like oh, just like looking down on me i drank an entire like liter of cranberry juice because that's what he had in his fridge and ate an entire loaf of bread and i told him to call an ambulance he didn't i just paced back and forth for two and a half hours and so i started to sober up a little bit and i had to pick up my friend because he was gonna he was actually performing Outside my loft now. Funny how things come come full circle. But I told him I would give him a ride there, and I was, like, really late because I didn't mean to get so fucking high. And I picked him up, and he, he told me years later he knew I was high. But I... <laughs> wow, that whole day was fucking traumatizing. That was the first time I did weed. Now, the second time. What's funny about it is I've had so many panic attacks on weed. I've gone to the hospital because I smoked too much weed multiple times. When I was like 18 or 19. I don't like, man, weed sucks. Like, uh, sometimes it's fine. But I don't know why I kept doing it. What the fuck? Alcohol is another thing entirely. I wasn't that, I didn't, I've never done anything else. Those are the things I, I did. So I didn't really venture out too much. I would do shrooms or acid at some point in life. I just have never been like, oh, I have 12 hours where no one will need something today. That's like never happened. <laughs> so that's the only reason I haven't done them yet. But, you know, when I when I can lock up a weekend and I just feel like something terrible is going to happen. I'll do some acid. I'll be three hours in having a good time. And then someone will text me and be like, your cats all got out. And I'll be like way too fucking tripped out to handle that. So... That's what, that, and it's probably the worst mindset to go into acid with. So, I don't know. Maybe at some point in life I'll do that or shrimps, but it hasn't happened yet. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we could do it. When we can do shows again, we'll all get fucked up and then I'll perform and see what happens. You'll all get your money back after I die on stage. <laughs> it, I definitely won't do well, I'll tell you that much. Um, I've never smoked before a performance. Fuck that. That won't go well. 
I've only drank be- before a performance one time, and it was like a shot and like maybe a beer, and it was the worst performance I've ever had. I was forgetting lyrics left and right. It was so bad. So never again. Never did that again. So never drink before a show. I'm 100. I'll tell you what I do. This is my uh, pre-show routine. Not that anyone probably cares. I will wander around with headphones, and I will listen to my set. Usually go through it like two or three times all the way through. It takes a long fucking time. And because especially with my 45 minutes, an hour long set, basically. And I'm like, that's what I'll do the whole time. I'll just go through it because I want to make sure I have it down. Even though I've done it so many times, it's like, what the fuck, bro? Probably overthinking it at that point. But it's like I have to know in the moment. So I'll put on headphones and I'll just wander around for a couple hours, you know, and I'll go through the set um, enough times. And then once I get on stage, it all goes out the window anyway. But that's like my routine. I don't really, I'm not lighting incense. I'm not meditating. I'm not doing something cool. I'm not, you know. I, I've seen people that can do that. Just I, I What I used to do before I did that, that's what I did all tour. But prior to that, when I just was doing hometown shows and stuff, I would even go for a run. I would take a nap before a show. It's like... I needed to get the adrenaline out of my system. I needed to do things that would almost sedate me um, because my energy levels were so... I would have so much anxiety and be so hyped up that I would become tired. So it's like I had to psych myself into the the moment, I guess. Hey, what else? What else can we reflect on? Huh. I really, yeah, I really didn't come into this with any topics. I've just kind of been in my head. Um... Trying to solve one of those puzzles that I can't talk about, um, but yeah, I do have a I have a couple of songs coming out in March. Uh, I think you'll appreciate both of them. I didn't produce either one of them. Uh, one of them was with this uh, production duo. The other one is uh, the last solo release you'll ever get from me, probably that I didn't produce. I wrote it well, quite a while ago. Um, and I was like, instead of just shelving it, like I tend to shelve things, uh, I'm going to put it out. Uh, it's a good song. It's a catchy song. And uh, it's called You're Good Enough For Me. It's cute. It's definitely We Should Just Enjoy Ourselves vibes. I'm dropping that. and we'll, I might drop one more, but I think just the two for March because April and May are going to be something different. And uh, yeah, May is my birthday, so keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. And it's a big one, too. I'm turning 29. That's, the, that's right before 30, and then it's all over once I'm 30. So it's got to be a big one. Got to go out with a bang. What a bang. Right? I think I'm hungry, but I'm not sure. You ever been in that position? I just, like, I've been exercising quite a bit, but the past two days I haven't at all. And so I think that my body's, like, you know? So I can't tell if it's a blood sugar thing. If I'm not hungry, I just feel like I need to be eating. What is it? What do you think it is? Maybe I'm just hungry for success. You know, you get those, it just flares up and shit sometimes. You feel me? Yeah, no, I made this amazing soup the other day. Oh my gosh. It's got like shrimp, rice, and then soup stuff. (laughs) I don't want to give away my secrets. I'll tell you what. I'll make gumbo at all my shows going forward. I'm going to have tour gumbo. You'll walk in the door. You'll buy a drink at the bar if you're of age. Tip the bartender. Be like, makes me look good. Please do that. Then you walk into the the venue and you'll just see a big crock pot. And you'll be like, damn, homie, you make gumbo for everybody. And then I'll come out and pass out the gumbo. And then I'll pass out a book, and I'll be like, this is the book of the week. You better, you guys better have this read by, before I get on stage because we're going to talk about it afterwards. Um, I wouldn't put you through that. But I would make gumbo for people. That would be pretty crazy to do, like, Airbnb shows, which no Airbnb would ever let me do that, but I could try. Um, just not tell them. And then get fired. <laughs> Airbnb would kick me off the platform so damn quick. I There was one Airbnb. Damn, now I'm sad because... Uh, I was going to have a show in Memphis on the last tour, and I was going to book this Airbnb. It was crazy. It was the craziest Airbnb. It had a stage and everything, so I was thinking about booking a second show myself. It was was the weirdest. It was the craziest Airbnb, so shout out to Memphis. If I come back, I'm definitely going there. 
Um, yeah, it was an insane Airbnb though. It's like it looked like Hogwarts or some shit. I don't even know how to explain it, but I was like, however much it is, we're doing it because that shit looks crazy. But yeah, um, I it would be cool to do like Airbnb shows, man, and make it like more of like a. I saw Miguel kind of do it once, where he was just performing in houses. I know Mike Posner and Big Sean kind of mm, kind of did it. They did it in like frat houses and stuff. Because they were still in college. Like, Mike Posner was at Duke. And he used to just, like, book college shows. And he would perform in basements at frats and stuff like that. Imagine seeing Mike Posner, Big Sean, like, artists like that in a fucking basement. Just say, what? So, I, I'm afraid with COVID that it's going to be a while before you could get away with stuff like that. Again, I think people are going to be really weary of one another. And it's nuts. Like, I always have to, like second guess myself if I want to shake someone's hand or hug them now it's just I feel like I can't like I feel like I'm assaulting somebody by doing it I used to be the person that would just like I'm a I'm a touchy-feely person so like I like the hug I, I mean that's what I did on my last tour my last I literally would go around and hug every single person uh for the last song of the night like I, I that's just the, how I am like it releases it endorphins gets your serotonin going it feels good to touch people and i don't mean anything by it it's more of just like i just like to spread love so i'm a yeah i'm a very touchy feely person so covid is like messed with me i haven't really touched anybody i just want to touch people right i just want to touch everybody I was, those are my famous last words Cyrus just won't stop touching people, I think. What the fuck? Well, I'm going to end up and my cellmate's going to be like, what, how'd you get in here? I just couldn't stop touching people. He's like, actually, why did I say he? They would definitely put me in woman prison. <laughs> I have some butch cellmate who could whoop my ass. Man, I guarantee I'll be more feminine than she was. She is. What would her name be? Bonnie. Yeah, Bonnie would fucking... I would be Bonnie's bitch for sure. I know for fucking certain I would be. Like, I would be doing, like... Whatever she asked, obviously. You know? Let's get off that road. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh... I'm excited for this week. This is gonna be a fun week. Um, I'm rap... Yeah, so it sucks. I can't really talk about everything I want to talk about, but... Um, yeah, I'm wrapping up a bunch of stuff, uh, between now and mid-March, and I should be, yeah, I should be done with pretty much, it's gonna be crazy, that's, that's all I'll say, that's all I'll say, do I have any more, uh, I know I was missing questions for a minute, and I can't remember if I saved any or set them aside, I probably didn't, um, I think I might have answered. Did I answer this? Yeah, I think I answered those. I swear I had a question that I missed. I haven't checked my text messages. I'm so sorry. I've been so behind. I've been trying to get shit done. Um, it's like I can't. I can multitask, but only to a certain certain point. Um, otherwise, I just have to like cut everything out. Do you guys do that? Do you have to like cut everything out just so you can lock in? Uh, that's what I have to do. Oh, let's talk about Mr. Potato Head, who's now gender-neutral gender Potato Head. I posted something. What did I say? Uh, <laughs> oh, it's about fucking time I've been at my wit's end about this specifically, which obviously was sarcasm. I couldn't care any fucking less. I will say this. <sighs> Some things I don't understand. Like, I don't think anyone was offended by... Because it's a potato, right? Potatoes, like, don't have genders as far as I'm aware. So, like, some things need not be changed, right? I Like, it feels weird to just, what, Mrs. Butterworth or whatever? Like, I wouldn't, I would be like, okay, cool. I wouldn't be like, you better make that just Butterworth. What? <laughs> I where's Where are we going to draw the line is my thing. Are we going to just fucking... We're just going to eliminate all of it. Just My thing is, I don't care about what anybody does until they fucking shove it in my face or down my throat. 
watch me. I felt it was like, watch me deep throw my SM7B. <laughs> uh, for the joke, I have to commit to the joke. I don't even think I can open my mouth that much. I'm not going to find out because someone will fucking screen cap it. Fuck it. No, i okay. <laughs> But yeah, I. It's I just don't see the point, right? Because isn't there a Mrs. Potato Head too? Who gives a fuck? My thing. Who cares? The they they drew more attention to something that I don't feel like was a necessary adjustment. Like I don't think anyone was up in arms about Mr. Potato Head. So I will say I don't want to live in a world where we just eliminate everything and it's just like we have to tiptoe around literally everything. It's just like, like I said, I don't fucking care. You can, whatever gender you want to be neutral, I literally don't give a fuck. I don't care about anything until someone's like, oh, by the way, did you, did you forget that I'm, that's annoying. Okay, you're just annoying. That would be like, oh, do you remember how I'm a rapper, guys? Do you remember that I rap? I'm just, like, I wouldn't do that because that's fucking annoying. So... That's where I'm like, I, I, I'm not even, I shouldn't out one of my family members. I'm not going to do it. But she did something that really bothered me once too. And it was just like, man, no, nah, I'm not going to do it. I can't do it. I want to. I'm, I'm not going to do it. Um, <laughs> actually, Tim Dillon, uh, the comedian I was talking about earlier, he has a great, um, you should look this up. Tim Dillon, Aunt Kathleen rant, probably. You can probably just type in Aunt Kathleen, Tim Dillon. And watch that rant. It's pretty funny. My situation was way more tame than that. But his uh, his is really funny. But yeah, I don't, whatever the fuck you got, you want to do. Whatever pronoun you want. I don't, gender, I don't give a fuck. I, my thing is, yeah, I get so annoyed when people are just like, they fucking, it just, I, and, I, and this is with everything. If you take your religion, you shove it down my throat, shut the fuck up. Is there gender, whatever. It's all the same thing to me. I don't care until you fucking draw attention to things. And I'm like, but Mr. Potato Head, that was one thing where obviously I was making a joke because I found it funny. Like, whatever. I mean, whatever the Potato Head is. I'm just like, <laughs> I feel like we prioritize all the wrong shit, right? I feel like we're just prioritizing all the wrong things. I feel like that was probably something that we didn't need to change. Whatever. They did. It's cool. I just, but it's just like, whatever. I feel like I got my point across <laughs> on that. What other screenshots have I been taking? Oh, I'm pissed about my cats. Because I got them these floating, like, shelves, that floating hammock with the steps. They refuse to use it. So I think I'm going to buy another shelf, lower the stairs, and, like, I don't... I was trying to do a cool thing for my cats. Like, this is what must, this has to be what it's like to be a parent. Like, you buy your kid their first bike, and then they just never use it, and you're like, this motherfucker. Like, or you, whatever. You get them stuff, you're trying to encourage them to try things, and they're like, oh, but I don't want to play soccer. You're like, well, fucking give me the soccer ball back then. It's so, my fucking cats. And then what makes me the most angry is that one of them was sitting on top of my ladder. I have a ladder because... My ceilings go up through the heavens. And at the top of the ladder, literally, completely vertical up against the wall. It's not even like at an angle so you could just easily walk up. It's completely vertical. So I don't even understand how the fucking cat gets up there. And then the cat's at the very top watching me install this shelf that it's just above the couch. You could probably jump into the hammock without the stairs, but I bought you fucking stairs. Doesn't use it. And then I'll put a cat in the hammock and it immediately aborts the hammock. It's the last time I do anything for those fucking cats, I swear. And then they just yell at me through the door. Their cat logic doesn't make any sense, does it? It doesn't. I'll answer, it doesn't. I'll answer for it, it doesn't. Anyways. What else did I do? Oh, when I tweeted on this day last year, we were kicking out the We Should Just Enjoy Ourselves tour to sold out crowds of over 80,000 across continental U United States. The majority of you and I... Uh, the majority of you were incredibly underwhelming, but I, along with roughly 40 to 100 of you at every show, did great. From us, you're welcome. What I was originally going to say, but then this is my thing, because obviously I like to make jokes, I like to make people laugh, but I also understand that people take things so literally. Whenever I tweet things, people will miss... I feel like you should know my sense of humor by now. 
But and I'm sarcastic as shit all the time. I'll say something and people will take that shit literally because I was just going to be like, I was going to just be like, on this day last year, we were kicking off the We Should Just Enjoy Ourselves tour to sold out crowds of over 80,000 across the continental United States. All of you were incredibly underwhelming, but I did great. You're welcome. That's what I was going to say because that's more funny to me. But then I included everyone else because I'm like, people are going to take this out of context, think I'm some sort of egotistical asshole. And it's like, no, I'm making a joke. It's funny. I like shock humor. Anyways. Yeah, I think I'm hungry. I think I am. I definitely, oh wow, Here's a, I saved a picture on my phone of always remember you're not ugly, you're just broke, and it's a before and after for Kylie Jenner. I hate that. I hope that, like, if you're growing up, if you're a younger listener, please don't look at these fucking bullshit, unreal expectations you see on Instagram, which is just a highlight reel of someone else's life. I guarantee they're just scrolling through their phone for fucking spring 2019 and they're posting a flashback or a throwback photo and you're like, wow, they're out in the beat. No, they aren't. They did that one thing once. They took a bunch of pictures and now they post about it every two weeks to make you think their life is interesting. It's really not. They're probably sitting doing the same shit, binging some series on Netflix. But I hate the fact that people feel like they need to change who they are. Like Kylie Jenner very clearly got in obscene amount of plastic surgery before she was even an adult. That's so fucking crazy. I hate it. Hopefully, uh, you know, if you've ever found yourself in a similar position, please don't fucking feel like you need to change who you are to meet some sort of bullshit standard that society sets for you. This shit is just, it's unnecessary. It's also not accurate. So my new microphone is amazing. It's literally changed everything. And the allergy medication, I feel like a new woman. Me and Bonnie, cellmates, I do. I feel great. Yeah, I feel like I, I need to edit this, though. This one might be a little bit shorter than normal. I think it was around like 45 minutes or so. So my apologies. This is a shorter episode. Um, I'll be more prepared next time around. I can't just spend in my head. It's, I have so, plenty. Like, if I could talk about everything I wanted to talk about, this thing would be three hours long. But... I need to keep some things uh, a circle for now. And uh, yeah, but not this Friday, but next Friday. I think You're Good Enough For Me comes out. Then uh, two weeks after that, I have another record, bigger record coming out. Um, that one should do uh, stupid numbers. Um, and then, yeah, April's going to be fun. We're wrapping up the Be Happy Project. Sorry that got, de got delayed slightly. Um, but you get a few songs from that to wrap up that project. And then... We will be moving on to uh, all the stuff I'm personally excited about, all the new shit. I really think that, uh, I think come May, if everything goes according to plan, which nothing ever does, but if it comes close, um, I'm trying to do something that's never been done before, so that's why I can't really speak on it. And, uh, I, you know, when I said I was moving on from music, I definitely meant it, but not in the way I think uh, most people would probably assume. It's not that I'm moving on. It's that uh, I really, I want this to be my, you know, my, my, my Jordan year, you know, to be my biggest, you know, I can't not, I won't stop doing anything until I feel like I'm at the very top. So um, I'm just trying to, you know, I'm trying to like beat my own expectations. I want to do something incredible. So that's what I'm doing and I want to blow people away. And I've been just been trying to brainstorm a way for, I'm going to stop talking. <laughs> I'm going to stop talking. This candle smells great. That was a good idea. Kudos to me. Let me pat myself on the back. But yeah, I uh, I need to edit this and because um, I had to be up early to day trade and also uh, got something coming in the mail from FedEx and they never fucking, oh my God, fuck FedEx. <laughs> I hate UPS, but I hate them slightly less than FedEx. FedEx is, and DHL is obviously the worst, but thank goodness they don't deliver around here. FedEx is the biggest piece of shit. I can't stand the guy that delivers for FedEx in my area, too, 
His idea of knocking on a door is this. He'll have a notice in his hand. I've watched him do it. He will sprint from his vehicle up my steps, slap it on the door and back to his vehicle. And then it'll say, delivery attempted. It's like, no, the fuck it wasn't. I've had to call FedEx and complain to get this guy to come back because I'm like, hey, I was literally, I'm sitting there like a fucking sad puppy, uh, sad puppy in the window staring and waiting for this guy to come. And he will park, get out of his vehicle and do that so quickly. I don't get it. I understand you have like delivering, you have like time frames, you have to hit each stop, but like you also have to do your job, right? Like you just, it's more work for you later to attempt delivery again, is it not? Or are you putting it off on someone else? I don't get it. But he will do this before I'm able to get to my door and then down my steps to the other door. 10, 15 seconds. He, he will do this. I've watched him do it and I've had a call before. They're like, why don't you just, I was like, what do you want me to do? Wait outside on my fucking stoop all day? <laughs> so I hate FedEx. I can't stand it. And then guess what? They were supposed to deliver on Friday. Didn't. It literally set out for delivery and then like 11.45 in the morning. And I sat at the window all day waiting. Uh, and so, well, until that notice. And it said, um, back at FedEx office, we'll attempt next delivery day. So he didn't even attempt. He like gave up halfway through the day. And then it said, going to attempt on Monday. I was like, all right, cool. Well, then guess what? Yesterday on Saturday, motherfucker attempts to deliver, I guess, at 4.59 p.m. I'm just, that's what it says. And it was like, no, it said it was supposed to deliver Monday. So I wasn't even expecting, dude. Otherwise, I would have been fucking at the window again, waiting, ready to leap out. And yeah, so 450, and then doesn't even leave a notice, like one of those things so I can sign fucking. And every time I call, they're like, oh, no, you got to sign to get the package. And it's like, how many times do I have to tell you? There's two doors between this and the guy that delivers. I'm just going to keep complaining. I can't stand FedEx. I'm sure there are other people that share my frustrations. USPS is great. The United States Postal Service, awesome. Love um, Adrian, my, my, my USPS person. She's amazing. I wish she <laughs> I want her to fucking do my FedEx route and my UPS route. And I would give her money. I would tip her to do that. But there's nothing sexier than getting a package delivered on time and actually getting delivered. I can't. Yeah. Anyways, we'll end the episode on that rant. I hate FedEx. If you work for FedEx, help. <laughs> Put in a word for my route. So they quit screwing me, man. Anyways, I just want to get that. I can't stand it. I will literally start ordering through other companies that don't use FedEx just because I hate them that much. I'm going to fight someone on FedEx, and then I'm going to stream it. And then I'm going to monetize it. $25 tickets. I'll fight any FedEx driver. I swear on my life. $25? Actually, no. Pay-per-view, $100. i will beat up any FedEx driver. On site. I get so angry every time I see a FedEx truck. <sighs> I could take this joke really far, and I'm trying not to. It's not a joke. I actually mean it. I can't stand it. Yeah, let's end the episode on that. What is this episode? Uh, is it 27? Did I get that wrong? I hope I'm right. Yeah, episode 27. Hell yeah. Sweet. Awesome, guys. Have a have a wonderful week. Um, love you, in case you forgot. Love you. Uh, let me know... Uh, what you're looking forward to. And uh, yeah, music is coming. Um, I know I've said that before. And uh, all, all I'll say is before we meet, we reach the halfway point for this year, um, you will have gotten beyond your money's worth. That's for sure. Way beyond. This is, uh, yeah, I think I have more music coming out this year than the last two years combined. So, it's quite a bunch. It's a lot. Listen, Jordan year. All right. I uh, love you guys. Um, yeah. Have a wonderful week. I'm going to edit this. Peace out. Yeah. Uh. And this is 
sunken place Y'all just simmer down and do your thing and go away No apologies, I say what I say You with me, then you with me If you're not, then well, it's bye Y'all just wanna low Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Cyrus Tries to Enjoy Himself, your favorite Monday morning podcast. And I'm your host, Cyrus, and I'm doing my best.